it's write a lot of work in here. Um, so I'm going to show you, since you already did this uh, in, in logic, if you took my logic, either online or in person, uh, you have learned how to build a NAND gate, but you probably didn't know why the schematic is designed that way. Why, why you have two PMOSes in parallel on the top and two NMOSes in series at the bottom. So that's what I'm, what I'm going to cover um, this morning really quick. And uh, draw a shape in HLVSI, the symbol, where it's called, uh, what's the name of it in here? Icon, I think. It's an icon view, right? So you learn how to do a, how to make an inverter last week, so this shouldn't be a problem. Okay. And um, layout. The P act, N act are the N plus and P plus. It's easy. Okay. The problem here, got a missing figure. I'll try to fix it later. Okay, so this makes the connections. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna fix that figure. I don't know what is that one. Um, Norgate got two PMOSes in series on the top and two NMOSes at the bottom in parallel. That's the shape of the Norgate. Don't forget to draw a bubble here and run the simulation. So you can simulate the schematic and the layout. Okay, make sure you show the error free, the uh, NCC, so exports match, topologies mar, uh, match, so that's an NCC check. Um, and DRC check first and then NCC check. Right? And starting from task three, I think, that's uh, AOI logic that which we haven't covered yet. So I'm going to talk about that on Wednesday and Friday and Monday, hopefully. So we're, we're going to cover AOI logic and uh, the stick diagrams and uh, the full adders. So you can see the size of the integral circuits becoming, uh, it goes up after task three, I think. That's task three. So this week's uh, main tasks or just the task one tool, you know. So you can work on this one uh, next week. So this is a two-week lab, okay? Task one, two for this week, and task three, and um, let me see. Okay, no task four, I guess. So just task, oh, you've got task four. For a flatter, next week. Okay, you need a simulation, and the layout. The reason I make it long is because um, because of what? <laughs> Why do I make it so long here? Taking a lot of space. Why? So that's a flatter. It is original flatter using gates. Uh, and, and I believe we have a simplified version, do we? I think it's probably next in the next lab. Let me see. Mm, oh, high speed flatter. Okay, so you can simplify using a technique called the AI logic. We're going to learn this week. So you can see the flatter, the simplified flatter uh, looks like uh, this. The compare with the uh, <laughs> original one, I just build, build a flatter using traditional gates. If you look at the flighter's logic, so whatever logic you have in that operation, just to put an adder there or put an OR gate, NAN gate there, right? Just follow the the, the uh, Boolean algebra or the logic in the flighter or the logic functions in the flighter, you are going to get this. But if you use a simplified version using the AOI, AOI logic, we're going to learn this week, it can simplify the logic and uh, end up with this uh, structure. It does the same job. I can see it has um, a lot less number of gates or transistors in the layout. How many bits are in this flighter? Is it one bit flighter, two bit flighter, three bit flighter? How many bits are in there? Just by looking at the ports. How many bits are in there? It's too soon to ask this question, but have this kind of question in mind. 
we have A plus B plus C E, right? How many bits? Is that one bit for either, two bit for either, or three bit for either? Okay, it's okay, you don't know it. <laughs> it's been a while from logic. Took it like two years ago. Okay. All right, so let's look at this week's task one and two, keep in mind. Task one and two for this week. Starting with the NAND gate. All right, I'm expecting you guys as one of the outcomes of this class, I expect you guys can draw the, the schematic of the NAND gate and, or NOR gate in a few seconds, right? That's the two um, parallel PMOSs on the top, this is the VDD. And I got two NMOSs at the bottom. That's A, that's B. So what is the output? Given that this is the NAND gate, what is the logic expression or logic function for the NAND gate output? Mm -hmm. It's AND and NOT, right? That's NAND. Um, so why do we have to use this type of circuit to form a NAND logic? So before we move to the truth table, okay, let's verify if this guy is doing a NAND logic. So the whole schematic here is basically a NAND gate. Okay. So what's the true stable for the NAND gate or logic for the NAND gate? You got A, B as the inputs. Let's do Y as the output. Okay, so all the possible inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. What is the Y for the first uh, input combination? Is that correct? So the results has uh, ones and zeros. And we learned from, I guess, Friday or Monday, I forgot. Um, so PMOSes are good at what? Doing what? Yeah. And NMOSes. Okay, so that's why you need a PMOS in the top and NMOS at the bottom to pass both one and zeros for the output. You can see the output is shorted to the one terminal of the PMOS is and also the terminal of the NMOS is. So now we know both PMOS and NMOS for the circuit. But why we put PMOS in parallel and put NMOS in series in this case? Just by looking at the truth table. Can we get an answer from that? So it was a pe the person who invented the NAND gate CMOS circuit, or how this was invented at the very beginning, at the first place. Just by looking at the truth table. Can you get an answer for that? Yeah, so we need the both transistors to be on, right? Because the inputs are shorted. Inputs are connected to the gates. Okay? Inputs, the inputs are connected to the gates. So we need the both a, these two to be one, right? And if you give a one to, to the to the NMOS, you are turning the NMOS on. Okay? If you have both are ones, you are shorting that output to ground. So they must be in series. It must be open at the same time. It's just the one channel here. Does that make sense? So they must be both ones to make this on. So 
you put the two envelopes in series, you put a one here, two ones, they'll open up two envelopes at the same time. And then it's going to be, it's going to uh, drag or pull this output point down to ground or short it to ground. Okay. So it works for the bottom. So what about the top? We know, first we know these are ones, so we know we need a PMOSIS, okay? Because PMOSIS are good at passing ones. So we know, we know that for these results, when the inputs are like this, we need a PMOSIS to work, to, to be um, designed in a certain way, we connect in a certain way on the top. And the possible inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. What's the conclusion from here? There's always a zero in the input. Can be two zeros, can be one zero, doesn't matter. It must have a zero in there, right? That's a requirement. So we've got a zero for the PMOS, what's happening? It's turning on that PMOS. So if put the P two PMOS in parallel, you can either turn on this one or turn on this one or turn both on, okay? It's gonna short this point uh, or put it up to VDD or short it to VDD. Okay, so two parallel PMOSes will do the job. Okay. Now, what about more gate? A, B, Y, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. But Y equals what? A or B, not. That's a nor logic. Zero or zero, zero, and not, it's going to be one. But if you have a one in the input, one of it, uh, two inputs, you are getting a one and then not, so it's gonna be zero. If you have a one, it's gonna be zero, right? So how would you design the circuit? You must have two zeros to pass a one. So we need a one for the one to pass a one to the output. We need the PMOS to pass one to the output. And they must be in series because they must be both zeros to turn on both PMOSes in order to short it to the VDD. So the PMOSes are in series on the top or at the bottom? Hmm? Top because I need to short it to VDD. That's why the PMOSes are series and they are on the top. Okay, to pass zeros to the output, I need the endmosis, and you can see these combinations. The conclusion here is, as long as I have a one in there, at least the one in there, can be one, one, can be two ones, doesn't matter. As long as one of the endmosis is on, it's being shorted to ground. So the two endmosis are in parallel. Nah, that drawing. You understand what's going on. I've been drawing this for a hundred times and still making the mistake. Where is the output? Here? Here? What is this? Yep. Yeah. That interesting. We design the circuit and it turns out to be a NOR. And we design the circuit like this, it turns out to be a NAND. But the most popular um, gates seems to be OR and AND. But can you make an AND gate easily from this?
Mm -hmm. So, so in this case, you you draw a schematic here, and then you draw icon view. You wrap it up uh, inside the icon, right? And then you can uh, name them as the same name for the ports. So you get a component we can use in your circuit, in your large scale circuit. Uh, but now we want to uh, AND gate in the library as well, so we can use it later on, right? So how do we easily make AND gate from this guy? Yeah, in murder. Connect the output. So this is A, then B, right? And this becomes A and B. Right? So this is exactly A and B. Interestingly, the AND gate has more um, transistors than the NAND gate, right? Two more. So how to do the layout? Start with the NAND gate. The two PMOS is on the top. I think we used the uh, cloud for PMOS, right? Yes. <laughs> so now you are planning for the for the layout. <laughs> two PMOS is. Two gates means two transistors. There's the top reel, which is VDD. You need uh, two transistors at the bottom for the, as NMOS, and this is the ground. Okay. Imagine these are the real transistors in electro VSI so from the library. You make these, and then do this. Gates are shorted together, right? Gates, and most and most of the gates are shorted. That's the VDD power for NAND gate. They are in parallel. So which means you need to draw them in parallel, which is this. Is that in parallel? You got one node, that's a VDD split into two branches and go through the two channels and merge. And almost are serious are in series how to do that. Here, here. So it's just one channel here from runs through the first channel then directly goes through the second channel. So it's just one branch. Here's the output. That's a dream. So a few questions. Which one is A, which one is B? Does that matter? Does that matter? The NCC check. When you're assigning the ports, the name of the ports, you're actually assigning which transistor to be A and which one to be B. If you are, we are uh, doing this, for example, okay? So that's a schematic, that's a layout and you have to pass NCC, okay? So in order to pass NCC, which one should be A, which one should be B? So where are the inputs first? Do you know which signals are the inputs? Which ones are inputs? Yeah, the pod are inputs, this is the inputs, right? Which is A, which is B? Does that matter? Is there, a, is there an order for them? They are. 
There is order, see? A is a top one. This one doesn't matter, they're in parallel, interchangeable. This one matters because the bottom one connects to the ground. So these two transistors are different, they're not interchangeable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is on top. Left and right, doesn't matter, this one matters. Okay? So which is A, which is B here? And where's the output? Let me know where, where's the output first. This one? Yeah. So, which is A, which is B? A is on the top. A is on the top. And B connects to the gate of the transistor, which is short as the ground. Okay, we'll, if you look at here, you got two parallel PMOS on the top. And they merge, so the current flow, flow from one node and merge. And this is the drain, which is the output, makes sense. And then reaches the first transistor, which is actually the, this one, the top one. Okay. So should this poly to be A? Yeah. So this is A? This is A? No. Top one is A. And this is B. See, this poly is connected to this transistor, has a source directly connected to the ground, which is this guy. Okay, so this poly, or the input to the poly, should be B. If you swap them, it's not going to pass the CC. Or LVS you know it's a layout versus schematic check, right? So what about uh, NOR gate? That's a schematic. Wait, one question here, okay? For the parallel transistor, transistors on the top, what I did was this, right? So what if I do this? What's the problem by doing this? Or they are the same, pretty much. Yeah, electrically it's the same, right? But in here, are we... So the, um, the concept is, you want to design the... Uh, so these are metal ones, right? And make sure the metal ones at the bottom here, it's not interfering with uh, other metal one traces at the bottom, so you don't you're running out of layers, <laughs> or you have to drill a hole to the metal tool to route to route it. Um, but usually this will be better because you have last number of traces over here, which usually you have to run a lot of signals. So it, instead of keeping these keeping two wires in, in the middle, you just keep them uh, in between the PMOSes and the VED, which usually you don't run any signals in there, okay? But only has have one uh, metal trace going down. Sometimes it's, it's, it helps. So what about this one? Nanga, NOR gate, NOR gate. Two PMOSes on top in series. Okay, so the current flows that way from power and flows that way, go through two channels, and here's the output. Okay, and this one reaches where? So now I have two ways to do it. Same to this one. 
first one, you just put inject that uh, signal into the middle of the two transistors, the middle pin here, okay, like here. And then you got two parallel branches and connect to the ground, okay? So this looks very similar to this uh, structure. It's gonna do the job. And these are polys. I'm using a different color here. These are polys. So which is A, which is B? And drawing the, the inputs like this, but in, in real world, it's not gonna work because they, they are both polys. They are interconnected if you draw it that way. It's the same layer that we shorted. So usually I have another signal here on this direction, in this direction. So, so in, for example, if I can do that, okay, so which one's A, which one's B? According to the schematic, if you want to pass NCC. That, mm -hmm. This, so, oh, you mean this one? Okay, must be A, that's right, and the second one is B. Because the gate, so this is the gate of A, and this is the transistor A, right? And A is on the top over here. That's why I have to label this as A and this as B. And if you look at this uh, signal when, when it goes down from the top, there's a, another way to do it, which is you can split it on the top of the transistors and then let the signal merge in the middle. It's also a parallel transistor. But so it's gonna be the same issue like this one, you are having too many wires in the middle, which usually you run a lot of traces uh, over there. So try to avoid that unless you have to. This is just a four gate, um, a uh, four transistor gate, so it's very simple. A lot of times it doesn't matter. If you use metal one in the middle, uh, you can run metal two and metal three. If you have multiple gates, uh, you wanna interconnect them using other metal layers. So metal one doesn't matter anymore, but a lot of times you even need a, a different layers of metal just inside one gate. So in that case, you wanna minimize the number of uh, traces in the middle. So using this one instead of this, um, to avoid any short circuits. I think that this is the only thing you need to you need to know for this lab. Do you have any questions on this? Looks like you guys understand what's going on here, right? Do you? Mm -hmm. All right, I think I can start working on it. Task one, two.